Okay, so now that we have a website created elsewhere, it's just that we have a little page that we can work with. Uh, let's move on to creating a very basic web page. And for that, we're going to be needing uh, not too much. You are probably working on a Chromebook. Uh, I'm working on Chrome OS right now. So I'm as limited as most people with Chromebooks are. Um, what I mean by that is we can't really download and install too many things. So we're going to be using uh, software that's already available on the web. And uh, that's the reason why we're using GitHub, because in this way, we don't need to download um, a, uh, an editor like Atom or, uh, or a Microsoft uh, code editor or anything like that. We're just going to do everything directly on the web page. Here I'm working out of a repository that I named conveniently I'm at 1416.github.io. In the end, this repository, as hopefully you've, you've uh, realized by now, that that's why we created it. This is going to be your homepage. This is going to be your address online. I'm highlighting it to copy it and paste it somewhere. This is empty so far, but if I paste it, it tells me nothing. It's just showing me the README page that was created with GitHub. And uh, it's basically inviting people to come and edit it because this is open source and we're not there yet. We're going to be, you, the individual, will be uh, in charge of your page and you'll be making all the changes. Because I'm sort of jumping into this particular lesson in the middle of other things. I may not have uh, some folders that you have already created, so let me create those really quick uh, just so that we can see how that's done pretty quick. Basically, I just have, like I said, I have this readme file. It's a markdown, which in other classes I'll talk about extensively. Here, we're mostly concerned with markup HTML pages. Uh, also, we want to create directories, and I don't have any directories, uh, so let's start with that. I'm going to add a file and tell it to create a new file. It's my repository, so inside of my homepage, there's going to be multiple folders called week one through week eight, all the way to week 12, depending on what class you're taking. So let's start with that week zero one. I strongly recommend you use zero one and not just call it week one because it simplifies it for the instructor when uh, he or she is checking your grades. I will then use a slash to say, well, that's a directory. So now a directory will be created. I have my repository followed by a directory name. And now I'm going to write the name of my file. I will call this index.html and press enter. This will take me into the editing environment. I'm on line one. I have all the space in the world, basically, to write a uh, beautiful web page or a bad one. And uh, in the end, we don't have a save option in, in, in GitHub, but we do have a commit. We give it a comment. Uh, the comment's been created for us as it's created at index.html file. If you want any additional descriptions to remind you of the work you did later, that's great. For now, though, I'm just going to commit the new file. Since the uh, lesson I'm working on right now is actually on week two, I'm going to jump back into my repository root folder. This is, this is the beginning of the website. I see now that I have a folder called week one, and inside of it, I hope that there is a uh, index.html, where if I do that, I'll see, yes, there it is. I'll go back and then do the same but now really working on the current assignment and I will click on add file create a new file and tell it to create a week 2 folder week 02 put in a slash so that it knows that's the directory and then create my index.html file this assignment actually you will be working with a different file but we will need the index file nonetheless uh, especially if you're going to be putting in uh, any any instructions about uh, uh, clicking back and forth to an image later. So I'll press enter to accept. My index.html will be created. 
And I'm going to keep this tab open because I want to jump, I'm going to be jumping back and forth with this particular um, assignment. This is pretty easy. Uh, this is, is this, I was going to say that maybe this is not real coding, but, but it is because the page is blank. So anything that you give it will be code. Um, please be sure to read uh, what the, what all these codes mean um, as far as HTML is concerned, how to create a paragraph, how to create a header, what those things mean. Those are in your book. Uh, we'll go uh, to this part. What does an HTML document look like? Well, it doesn't look like this. This is a blank slate. So this is what it looks like right here. Uh, it basically it introduces the code by saying, "Hey, this is a doc type HTML. This says this is an HTML5 document. Note how it doesn't have the number five there. It uh, HTML's been around f since the early 90s, 1990. So I mean, it's it's an old language and it's gone through lots of different uh, uh, versions. And although I could give you a uh, link." Uh, to show you what it used to say here and all the extra code we had to do. Just know that for a modern environment, you just need to say we're working with HTML5, which is the current version of HTML, and that's how you do it. Just as, if this is a document type of HTML5. That's what this means. This means that we will be dealing with a U.S. Uh, language. Well, it's English for the U.S. so that it knows what kind of characters to use. This is also specified again when we say that the character set is UTF-8. That's the standard that we use for, for here, for this particular uh, region. And I'm, I'm in the central time zone in the United States. Then we have title. It's My Web Lesson 4, uh, which we can change easily. Uh, then next it says that it's going to be linking to a style.css. We're not too concerned with CSS just yet. That'll come later. And then we have the body, which is where the code actually resides for your page. You can copy all of this by selecting it. If you're having a hard time selecting things in the box, you can tell it to view the raw. It will take you to a, uh, to a document in um, GitHub where you could click anywhere, press Control A to select everything, and then right click and copy. I'll jump back to the lesson and then jump back to my GitHub page where I will right click and paste this or I can press Control V I can't find paste right away so Control V as in Victor will paste let me make this text a little bit larger so I can read it better and this is just a code that I copied from uh, uh, from the other place so for the title of the page I'm gonna change it within the uh, tabs so that I only have the uh, title within the brackets opening and closing and say that this is going to be week two uh, a very simple page and that's a HTML page everything else is fine uh, this doesn't matter that we don't have a style.css yet we will get to that at some point but I'll just leave it there it doesn't it's not too much it's just one line it will not slow our page down and then for header, this is my web page. That's fine. Um, let's see what uh, else comes along. Well, before I go on uh, too too far, I'll scroll down. I won't change this because, well, maybe I will because we've already created index. I'm just going to say that we've updated index.html and tell it to commit the new file which is similar to saving but it's not quite the same but it'll work for us for now if I go to see what the page looks like now although it's saved github is handling millions of pages at a time even as you're doing yours so if I try to reload this more likely than not it nothing's gonna happen give it 30 seconds give it a minute if if it's still not updated then you know wait a, a little bit more uh, just you know just know that if you have committed the code is going to be there waiting for you I'm gonna scroll down and just uh, it explains a little bit more here about what doc type is what I just told you about what the HTML element does what uh, the head uh, 
code is and just a few more brief explanations about this. So here there will be instructions about how to do this in CodePen and if you want to do that that's fine. CodePen will give you as opposed to having to wait to see if the page has, re has loaded already CodePen will actually show you what, the, what your code looks like right away. But it's not completely necessary. It's just kind of very handy. So we're, we're making our first page. I'll keep on scrolling down. Here are some explanations about what the code looks like. Uh, this will become very useful whenever we get to the uh, putting in the uh, picture of the cat, if that's what this class is. Uh, there's uh, explanations as to what the uh, tags look like and what they mean. Uh, one of the reasons why I post this on GitHub as opposed to just posting it here on your class, uh, you'll see that whenever there are uh, attributes and there are different commands for HTML that the uh, the color will change. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Notice how image here is green and then everything else it recognizes some keywords that are blue and then just regular text is black. And that is that is a, 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 a keen way, a good way of showing you this is code and these are different things that code does. I'll keep on scrolling down. Read about coding standards, uh, how you should really keep to lowercase whenever you're tagging your code. Uh, also, keep to lowercase when you're naming your files. Keep to lowercase when you are creating directories. And I hope that you kept to lowercase for your username. Spaces within file names and directories and usernames are troublesome. They will, they will basically mess you up whenever you try to uh, upload, whenever you try to uh, publish, whenever you try to share code, it's going to become very difficult. Most importantly, when your instructor goes to grade, it will become difficult for him or her. Uh, two space indent, comments are greatest, and we'll talk about uh, comments shortly later. Here is a starter HTML template. Again, this is kind of sort of like what we just copied and pasted. Uh, let me see if that has loaded by now. And I see that it has not, well, mostly because uh, it's trying to load my homepage, which has nothing. I published this in another place. I published it in week 02 slash index.html. And I'll press enter. So sure, there it is. This is my web page. If I right click, tell it to view the page source, I'll see my code exactly as I left it. So I'll close that tab and come back to the lesson. So, I mean, I, I guess I could copy and paste this one, but it will only replace the, uh, the code that I already have. I've already changed the page title. This one doesn't have a link to CSS, so you know, ours is there, but it's linking to nowhere, and that's fine for now. Uh, you can always get this starter HTML template. So in future assignments, when you create a new page, you can always just click here and save this link for you to go and just copy and paste this to create your new pages. So here's the actual assignment, a very basic HTML page. So like I said, this, this doesn't have any real coding, but I want you to become familiar to what the code is actually doing. I will start by co uh, copying all the code that is given to me. This very simple web page is nonsense, completely nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. It's it's creating a, uh, I think just random notes from a, from a, from a random person. I'm going to copy the text that I just selected. I'll go back into my GitHub page and click on the index page. I'm inside of week two. So click on the index page, index.html. That will open it up just to show us. I can't really change anything here. And I can tell right away that I can't because the pencil shows up. If the pencil shows up, that means that you can click it and you can edit this file. Now, at, this is my editor. This I can actually I can actually change. I can actually edit this. So here at the end of this is my web page. I'll press enter a couple of times. And you can press enter all you want. 
you know, just don't go crazy with it because then it'll stop making sense. Uh, but HTML will ignore, your browser will ignore all those spaces. You can paste what you just copied from the page there and it says my website is all about food. That's the new header. I already had a header called this is my web page. I could either copy and paste this over it or I could just simply delete H1, which is what I did. Now, my website is all about food. It's followed by a, another paragraph that says, uh, that says, like I said, a whole bunch of nonsense. At the end of the line, though, you'll notice that it just, it just keeps on going. And we can fix that so that, that we can read the code a little bit better. If I click on the no wrap option, I will give it or ask for a soft wrap. And then that way, when it reaches the end of the screen, it'll go to the next line. So now I know that this paragraph opened at the beginning of line 12. Line 12 is actually occupying two lines and it closes with the slash P for the paragraph end. Next, there's a header two. This will be smaller than header one. Header one being the most important will always be the largest. Uh, there's header one through six, but this is H2. This is a smaller header, H3. Uh, more paragraphs and then they start to repeat because we sort of start to get going getting into the conversation with the page I have this blank space at the end and it just bugs me so I'll delete it so that there's only 31 lines I will scroll down to commit these changes basically save the page and let's see what else we got to do throughout this here uh, well next uh, we're gonna be working with lists and please know the difference between order list and unordered list on order list, our list for the order doesn't matter. So what does that mean that it doesn't matter? Well, we have eggs, milk, cheese, etc. But what if orange juice were on top? It really wouldn't make much of a difference if orange juice was on top. This would all be bulleted items. And the one thing you need to know about on order list is that you have a little divider, or basically a container, as it were, uh, for the list that starts off by declaring an on order list with angle bracket ul and it finishes at the slash angle bracket slash ul everything inside of those two brackets then if we have a list item this will say well this is part of the list so this will be bulleted because it's unordered if you wanted to do an order list you declare it in a different kind of container an ol order list and then the list items are declared the same way still an li only difference is going to be that these because they are ordered, they will be presented with numbers. Then there is, uh, it's gonna ask you to uh, get some uh, emphasis, so make some uh, words bold and make some of them italic. The way that you declare a bold is by telling it to show you strong type. This is a slash strong, so this is where it would be closing. And to make it italic, you would tell it to emphasize, it's just EM. So those are just some examples. I'll scroll back a little bit and see then what, what to do with our page. This is what my page is looking like right now. My website is all about food and it says cheese. It's what kinds of cheeses, etc. Well, like I said, this is still a nonsense page. We're just getting familiar with the code. I will copy the list. Let's start out with uh, the unordered list. I'll copy all that code and copy and go back to my page. I think I'm not editing it, so I will click on the pencil to edit. And I will pick a place before the body is wrapped. I'll put it here on line 30, press control V. If you're not on line 30, but you're close by, that's fine. It's not an exact science. Like I said, it doesn't matter how many spaces you have in between doesn't really matter too much that I have uneven spaces from the left if you want to change them I become a little bit irritated when everything's all over the place I try to fix it as I go I will not succeed in fixing all the all the incorrect or bad looking spaces uh, then I'll scroll down to the order list copy that select it all and copy go back to my code press control V and paste it Something that I can do is, since I already have these H3s, these headers, I'm going to copy one of them. You could type it out if you want. 
as a matter of fact, you might want to type out everything because then you become familiar with the uh, with the feel of the code. But you can just paste it like I did here. Um, since this is a grocery list, I'm going to change the word uh, Stilton there to groceries. Then, uh, since I had already copied that H3, I will put one on the order list as well. HTML is read from top to bottom. We will be going sideways and, and back and forth later. But for now, just know that everything that you type, your browser will begin by reading at the very top, well, this is an HTML document, it's got a title, and then there's a header, and then there's this, and then there's paragraph, like, it will just read it from top to bottom. So, I will change that Stilton on my line 40 to something else. I do believe that's a recipe. And I think we decided that this is what? It's vanilla, butter, is it cookies? I'm not sure. Maybe let's just say the recipe for cookies. If you want to replace the lists, make sure that you do it with something that kind of makes makes sense within the containers. Uh, if you want to replace it with a list of TV shows, if you want to replace it with a list of music artists, whatever interests you, this is your page. It's a silly little page, but in the end it's yours. You can start playing with it right now and start to remember what the elements look like because later on when you work on your projects you can always come and and check your older work your previous work and copy and paste a lot of this uh, a lot of this code there's nothing wrong with uh, reusing code I would say as long as it's your own but there's plenty of places on the internet where you can uh, get what's called um, design patterns, which is code that's already been made. Every web page ever made has already been published. If that makes any sense, what I'm saying is, is that if you're thinking about creating a new page, somebody's probably already done it and maybe the code is out there. So I'll keep it as update index.html and uh, before I jump out, I'm going to do one last thing. Just to add to the confusion, I'll click here on the white, press Control A, that selects everything, and now right click and copy. And now I'll scroll down and commit the changes. Update index.html remains, click on that. And I'm going to jump out to another tab and I'm going to go to Code Pen. See if it remembers me in the system. You could just start coding and work with a uh, file in CodePen, but if you actually have an account, you can save it. So like here, it remembers me from another time, so I will keep on using this login. And uh, then I can create a new pen, and I can say, well, this is uh, going to be, and here where it says Untitled, I'll click on the pencil, give it a name and say a very silly page. I can use um, I can use spaces because it's just the name of the file. This will not actually publish to a repository, but it's easy enough to go and find it. You know, by a descriptive name. Your code for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Right now, we're concerned with the HTML only. I'll click here on the left side under HTML. Press Control V, and everything that I just copied, I pasted. And uh, there's a little error here at the bottom. And basically what it's saying is, is that, that I don't need to declare the document type as, as HTML because it knows that this is an HTML page. See, that, that gets rid of the error. But I'll leave it there nonetheless because, you know, too bad, CodePen. I mean, deal with it. This is an HTML page and I want to declare it because later on, if you come and get this file and don't get the doc type HTML, you may have problems on another page. So this is a very crowded space to show me HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I can click on Change View, and I'll pick the one on the left. That way, my code's on the left, and I can then uh, minimize JavaScript, minimize CSS, and then see how you have all this code that you have copied and pasted, and immediately, without having to wait for GitHub, you can see what it's looking like. Here's my groceries. Remember when we said that in an on an unordered list, it doesn't matter, the order doesn't matter. 
what that means is that, okay, well, the eggs are on top. If I select the eggs, cut them, and put them after the orange juice, the list will still work as an unordered list and uh, show me the bullets, but except now the eggs at the bottom. Um, where the actually where the order does matter, it's going to be in the order list. This is a recipe for cookies or cooks, as I like to type. I'll correct that. But preheat the oven. Well, um, that makes sense. That should be the first thing you do. And uh, but maybe maybe you want to add the vanilla first, for whatever reason. This is a silly page anyway. I'll give myself a little bit more space so I can see the code a little bit better. And say I'm going to replace add the vanilla. I want to put it before add butter. So does that mean that I'll have one, three, two, four, five? It should mean that it, I will always have one, two, three, four, five because this is an ordered list. So copying or actually cutting here, I'll right click and cut. Control X is my shortcut. And then add it as the second space. Paste it. Control V as in Victor to paste. Then my list on the right side should show up as one, two, three, four, five, except the vanilla is added first and the butter is added after that. Like I said, it's nice to have this uh, saved somewhere else, but I don't expect you to be working on this completely because when we get to images, you'll find that um, images cannot, we don't, they don't work nicely here. Uh, unless there's a paid account, then we'll just keep on using the uh, free account. Notice how it's telling me there's 11 unsaved changes. Be sure to save early, save often. That's uh, why it matters to have your own account. Uh, and I made some changes here, so something I can do is click inside of the code, press Control A to select all, press Control C to copy, and then when you go back to your GitHub, you could edit this file, click anywhere, control A to select all, I'll backspace to delete, and then press control V to paste, V as in Victor, and everything is loaded in. If you want to work completely out of GitHub, that's fine. I'm just telling you that if you're working with code and you're just learning it, this helps a lot in seeing what's going on. Uh, it, it should make a little bit more sense what, what to expect whenever you're typing in your code. Uh, for example, my website is all about food. It's an H1. Well, you know, what if we change it to something else? I told you that it goes all the way to 6. Well, what's the difference between H1 and H6? Right away, you can tell H6 is the smallest one. It's the largest number, but it's the smallest file. Does that mean that H1 will always be the largest one? Not necessarily, but we'll talk about that when we get to CSS, and we're not there yet. So continue uh, along the... Uh, along the lesson and uh, well actually I think that we did pretty much everything for a very simple silly website or web page and uh, um, oh yeah we'll be right this actually although I'm working at inside a file called index.html that's why I left that there so that it will give me the opportunity to show you how to rename the file uh, because although we've been working with index.html, index.html actually comes in the next exercise. This one right now will show you, this is just, you know, we're getting ready to work with all this code. We created all this code, but really, this should actually be called coding101.html. I'm just going to copy that. You could type it if you want. It's, it's inside the week 2 folder already. And uh, this is the way it's going to work. I'll click, actually, let's see, I think I've already committed this, yes. I'm going to click on the week two link here so that it shows me what's inside of the week two folder. And here is index.html. So I'll just, I just wanted to make sure that I was in the right place. I go into index.html and then I'll tell it to edit. Now we've been editing everything here uh, all the code inside. The other thing that we can actually edit is the name of the file. So right now it's called index.html. I'll paste what I copied. I only need one .html. Make sure that your files are space free. Don't call it coding space 101. Call it coding 101. Don't call it 
coding with capital letters and two C's, etc. Call it something that makes sense, but keep to the lowercase. It's in the long run, this will go a long way. And uh, it'll make life for everybody much better. I'll commit the changes. And whenever this page actually uh, does upload, or rather it updates, this page, this index.html, will give me an error because there will not be a file there. Instead, I'll need to go and look for um, my username.github.io slash week02 slash coding101. But like I said before, it will take it some time for it to get there. Uh, so if you want to change, like I said, any of these, if you want to add any 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 text, any any content, by all means do. Start playing with the code. Uh, make sure that if you're going to be keeping things in CodePen and you're going to keep them in GitHub, make sure that you're you're okay with the content on one as opposed to the other. The one that matters is going to be this one, the one that is actually tied to your um, to your web page, so that when it loads, well, like this one now, it it's actually tells me that it's updated, so I can change the name of the file index.html uh, to coding101.html. I'll click on that, and then it gives me the page as it looks like right now. In the this is the page that you need to turn in. So be sure to select it, copy it, or if you want to memorize it, but I would copy that. Um, then in your assignment, make sure that you're inside the assignment. You would click on the name of the assignment uh, and scroll all the way to the bottom. And so that the instructor can see what your page was. In assignment submission, click on write submission and here paste actually it will give me an error if i try to paste it'll say yeah press control v and so press control v uh, and this is the page that the instructor will open the one that we just uh, saw right here that we made the changes to and at least for this assignment for this week two assignment coding 101.html is the one you need this is the link click on submit for a grade and uh, We'll see you on the next lesson.